Hey guys, um, so there's this question in the uh, Digital Ambition Circle community on how to get this effect here with this line at the end of your text um, using an after pseudo element. Um, not the solution, it's not quite using just one after, but I think it's a lot more flexible. So I just wanted to talk about that solution. Here's an example of it here. And if I look at my responsiveness, what I'm seeing here is the white line on the right hand side here is staying the same distance from the right and the same width, regardless of the length of that line. Um, the angle of the text and the angle of that line are identical. Um, and it stays that way throughout the entire responsive view of that. Um, I want to show how I've done that. So heading over to our builder, I've actually used a BIM element here. So I've created a, sorry, BIM block. I've called it line after angled. Um, I've got a standard bricks heading in here. I've just used a style attribute to style the second part of that word. Um, normally I'd create a class for that. And then my line here is just a BIM element as well which is styled up as well. So let's see how this actually works. So with the line after angled, uh, if we look at that, we've set it to a horizontal row and align our cross axis to the center so that the text and the line line up properly. Um, now I've specifically set my flex wrap to no wrap and I'll show you why. If I take that off and use a default, which is no wrap, when we get to our mobile landscape breakpoint, it drops down to the next line because it automatically turns into wrap, which is a standard bricks feature. So what we want to do is from the start, we want to specifically say that this has no wrap and it doesn't matter when we change to the other breakpoints, it won't wrap around and it stays responsive on the one line. So that's there. We then give it a column gap of one REM and that's to just space out my text and my line, you can make that whatever you like. If I make it wider, say 2 REM, I get a bigger gap between the text and my line. Um, and then on the style, um, I've simply transformed using the skew on the X axis of minus 10, which gives us the same angle on this text. So instead of using a italic or oblique, um, text and then trying to match that line uh, we're just going to skew the whole box so the angle of this text and the angle of that line and that line inside all match exactly the same so that's a angle there uh, and I think that's it for the block level the heading um, style it up as you want with your topography but on the CSS all I've done is Oops, I've got, I've got advanced schema running here. And sometimes it messes up with this CSS here. Uh, try this CSS. Uh, oh, this is getting frustrating, Maxime. You need to fix this. See, the CSS box comes up and then it just disappears. Okay, so my only fix for this, hit the save button. Hit the refresh. Um, and look, I'm using Advanced Seamer. Advanced Seamer is a great product. Um, the uh, supercharged CSS feature is still a bit buggy. Uh, Maxime needs to do some work on that. Um, the biggest frustration with it is what I just saw there, where you go to the uh, CSS tab and it just disappears. This whole box disappears and you just can't get it back again. I'm not sure what causes it. It just randomly seems to happen. But anyway, coming back to that. So on our heading, uh, the only thing I've done here is put some white space no wrap so that we don't have these two words separating and wrapping around. Um, and the reason I put that there is because there is no UI setting for that in Bricks. So I put it here and because we've got CSS here, I might as well put the line height to one here as well. Uh, you can do that through your topography up here, but if you're doing CSS here, you might as well put it all there. So that's for the text, for the line. Now this is the tricky bit. On the uh, line after angle with the element line, 
Having a look at the layout, we're setting the height of it to 2 rem at the moment. Uh, if we want it narrower, like the other example, we might make it say 1.5. We've got a narrower line, so it's not as high. And we this is for the builder, this unset. If I take that out, see how my line goes high? So in bricks in the editor, for an empty box, um, it makes the minimum height 90 pixels. Uh, on the front end, that would be 1.5 REM, but in the editor, it's 90. So we're just going to categorically unset this. Or, or So we're just telling it to unset that 90 pixels so we can see it properly in the editor. Uh, that's all we need to do as far as that goes. We give our background. I'll just use this background color here. And then we've got a little bit of CSS. So we need to make our box position of relative for that line. Uh, and we use the after pseudo element to create a white box positioned absolutely, which is five pixels wide, 100% of the height of that box and 10 pixels from the right. And that's our little line over there. So if we wanted a really wide line, let's say 15 pixels, we've got a 15 pixel wide line there. Okay, and it's 10 pixels from the right. Let's make it 15 pixels from the right. Okay, so now it's 15 pixels from the right. We wanted that to be on the left, we would just change that to left. And there we go. So we can move this around. We're not angling it or anything like that because our parent container has the uh, skew on it. So we don't have to do anything with angling. And that's all we need to do. If I want that to be yellow, make it yellow. This is another AT thing with this. Um, uh, they call it uh, supercharged uh, CSS. When you change properties in here, see it hasn't rendered properly. Press the space, car, space bar, enter whatever, and then it renders properly. So it's another little bug that uh, Maxine needs to look at there. But as you can see, it's really super flexible. Uh, I'm going to maybe duplicate this section. And on that container, I'm going to make that a grid. And we're going to say, oh, I'm just going to put 2 rem gap and 1FR, 1FR. So we've got a two column grid. And if we look at that, so you can see down here, that's just going to be super responsive. Uh, in fact, let's change the line to go back to the end and white again. So we'll just make it white. And we want to stick it back on the right. Okay, there it is there. We've broken our connection to this preview. There it is on the right. And there we go. So it's responsive, works perfectly, and you've got a lot of control over it. And looking at the DOM, this box here is just a div with our line uh, and an after pseudo element for the uh, for the line there. So I can change that there to whatever color we want. Now, because we're using a background, that could also be a gradient. So you can actually have a gradient going one direction uh, on the line and gradient going the other direction on the, uh, in the little box in the middle there. So highly functional and customizable. I think it's a good way to do it. It's a little bit more than just adding an after um a, a pseudo element to your text and then adding some um, gradients and lots of stuff but it gives you a hell of a lot more control so hopefully this makes sense um if it, uh, if it doesn't then let me know and if you do uh, then please hit the subscribe and hit the like thank you